peek a -boo. This is the founding father of your face. If you don't have a good base, you cannot do good makeup. Keeps me hydrated for at least two days, so I can skip a day in between. Well, not if I don't shower. and welcome back to another vlog and I'm always starting off looking extremely extremely fatigued I am makeup free and even moisturizer free you're welcome but I thought today could be the beginning of a proper glow up so how I prep for filming I like to film generally one day a week if I can fit it in and I have to prep for that because I only wash my hair once a week I've got lots of other commitments as you know I have three children I work also and we just have a very busy household so I am going to start to finish do a glow up with you and today we are actually focusing on prep day so I am going to fake tan and I'll show you what I'm using at the moment I'm also refreshing my nails and I'm actually kind of glad the camera's not focusing on them right now because they are a little bit of a state um, but we're getting a fresh coat of paint on them I'm not sure if I'm able to change the design it's the first time I've ever had these topped up they're sculpted gel nails but very excited to get those topped up today. Hopefully they'll look nice and fresh. And then I'm also going to put a hair mask through my hair, which I like to leave to sit all day. Then tomorrow we will begin the actual glow up. So the makeup, the skincare, and all that kind of thing. So I'll take you for a full day of glands. I'll be using some new makeup as well. So trying that with you and some new skincare that I've just started using. So very exciting stuff to come. But first, let's get to my brunch slash lunch situation. And it's a late breakfast kind of a morning. I'm making my little one peanut butter and banana on toast for the first time. I remember having this as a kid and I thought it was the bee's knees. The bit of cinnamon on top. Mm. In fact, I might actually have the same thing. And I find this jigsaw after I've just cut it extremely satisfying for some reason. Okay, hungry baby calling. We have a hit. Usually I have to pay this child to eat, but he's willingly having his fruits and vitamins. So thank goodness for that. So inspired by my baby, I too am also going to be having some fantastic, the unhealthy version of peanut butter on toast. But I'm going to use these English muffins that I've had sitting in the freezer. They're the spicy fruit ones. And these are a little treat that I haven't had for a little while. So I'm going to make an exception today. As per mentioned before, and I think all carers can relate, the dark circles are, um, are a package deal, unfortunately. <laughs> anyway, back to the brunch. <laughs> So having my bananas and peanut butter and butter, I think, as well, on top of that. And then I'm also going to be having this curried cauliflower soup. Uh, this is a multiple-time purchase from Aldi. It's, I think, $2.50 a bag. There are two servings in here, but I just have the whole thing. And I think I'm going to top it with some tuna. So a very healthy, wholesome, filling lunch for today. <laughs>
And I've decided to finish off my peanut butter banana toast with a bit of sugar-free maple syrup. This is the vanilla version by Queen. Absolutely love this stuff. One fifth of the calories of regular maple syrup and sugar-free, so loving that. See how I'm justifying my treat here? I mean, it's full of sugar already with the bananas and the naughty peanut butter. <laughs> And I'm topping it with sugar-free maple syrup. It's like people that order those skinny lattes, but then I'll have two teaspoons of sugar with that. <laughs> That's me right now. Anyway, and I've topped it with some cinnamon as well. I've really overdone it here, but I love this cinnamon. This is our own special jar of cinnamon. For those of you who have been using supermarket cinnamon your whole lives, uh, you've been doing it all wrong. You need to go out to a wholesaler or a spice food shop. This is the Sri Lankan health cinnamon, but the flavor, guys, it is so much sweeter, less bitter, less I've been left at the back of the cupboard kind of taste. This is truly a game changer in the spice world. An absolutely strange and funky combination to be sure, but I must say from half demolishing my peanut butter and banana toast, I think I have found my new favorite thing, which is a absolute disaster for my diet because it's full of carbs. But in life, one does have to enjoy it, don't they? And you know what actually made it was surprisingly, the vegan cultured butter, which I kind of use exclusively now. I love butter, but once I discovered this vegan butter, it just has such a rich kind of tangy sour note to it, and it's still just as luscious as butter would be, but with a nice sourdough or cultured edge. And I'm not giving much love to my soup, but that's because I do have a sweet tooth, but the tuna with the soup is such a great way to add a bit of yummy protein into your lunch, but also keeping it nice and low carb. This cauliflower soup is very little carb, so a nice way to have a healthy balance, so to speak, guys. Well, that's what I'm calling it. <laughs> and we are back to our horrible lighting situation, but we're making the most of it. Now, I am notoriously in a hurry. Where is my Olaplex? I haven't washed my hair, I've just dampened it and I will just give it a little bit of a towel dry. I do this treatment once a week and it's actually an anti-breakage treatment. So great for long hair or thinning hair or if you've been you know, on holiday and in the sun and you just need it to Get its glow back, get its strength back. So I've been using this for the last probably 10 weeks now and I have noticed a difference in the thickness of my hair. And as you can see, it takes nothing to apply. You literally just put a little sample of it in the palm of your hand. Oh, these nails. I don't know how they survived the journey with all the jar opening and things that I've put them through. I literally just comb it with my fingers through the tops and midsection and roots. It can go absolutely everywhere. I've put a bit extra in the fronts of my hair because that's where I find I get the most breakage. And that was the Olaplex number three that I put in my hair. I only use this once a week, so good value for money. Now I have literally run out of time. Um, so I'm going to quickly go through my tan with you. I always like to put lip balm on first when I'm tanning my face also. And I am an exclusive fan of Saint Tropez. Now this is a very grotty bottle, it's almost done. And this is a facial mist, it's got hyaluronic acid and vitamins in there, so really nice one skincare wise. And I've just uh, run the nozzle with some hot water because it was a little bit clogged. You literally just, from a distance, Use about six pumps there, just in a cross motion, uh, straight motions down the front and sides of your face, just to cover all bases. And then for my body, I'm going to use my tanning mitt from Le Tan. Find this at Priceline or your local chemist. This is really nice and like a velvety one. 
has really lasted the distance. And my new favorite tan is the Saint-Tropez Classic Tan. And I believe I'll be using this exclusively from now on. I used to use the Purity Mousse, which I've just run out of, which is fantastic if you want a light tan, but this gives a slightly more bronzy olivey look, which really ties in with my skin tone. And it also smells so much nicer. Like this actually has a beautiful perfume to it, whereas the other ones kind of make you smell like a baked potato. Call it a tropical scent, but Mm, maybe tropical fruit, you know, lying on the side of the road scent. Gives a lot more even airbrushed look and I've never had any streaking with the purity mousse or the bronzing mousse. That's what I'm using for my tan, but unfortunately it looks like I have completely run out of time to do the rest of my body, so I'll have to do it when I get back from my nail appointment. Okay, we're back. Different day, same lighting, same dark circles. So we do have a little bit of consistency in this vlog. I apologize in advance, we're going to be jumping around a little bit because I like to film so far in advance because, like I said, my life is very unpredictable and can turn in any way. My little one is going to be joining me for my hair wash this morning and the routine since I last spoke to you has not changed. The nails have also been done. These are actually my party nails, but that is a vlog for another day. They are lovely though, aren't they? This is a bit of a pink sparkly moment. So I've done an express tan this morning. It's a three hourly one because short on time. One thing I have noticed with this new range that I'm using from San Tropez is that it does leave a visible color that washes off in water. So don't be alarmed if you are in a puddle of brown fluid. You are not excreting, it is just the tan. I will look a lot paler than I am at the moment, but apparently this express tan continues to work after you've washed it off, so let's just see about that. You've caught me at the stage where I'm just about to wash my hair. Now you all know my hair care routine that has not changed since my last few videos on my hair loss and hair care journey. I'm going to begin with the blue shampoo, leave that in for three minutes. I have a very wobbly tripod and a child that is playing with it. My black shampoo by Milkshake, that's the second shampoo. And then I pop in my Cune hair mask, the color Brilliant. But what I am changing up is my hair style. I am not using my heatless waves at the moment. I have straight away and I am trying something different. It's actually taken a while to perfect the technique, so I will go through that part in a little bit more detail. But I will get on with my hair wash and I will catch up with you when I have done my skincare. Okay, hair wash is evidently over. I'm going to keep this brief. I'm going to do my new favorite hairstyle, which I'm naming the Britney Spears Blowout. It's Britney, bitch. I know Britney Spears does not endorse this. The style just reminds me of how she had it in the 90s, just a nice voluminous kind of bob shortcut section with the straight layers underneath. So, I have been trying to develop this volume and I think I've finally nailed it. So the key thing to remember here is the product. To give that extra root volume, you're going to have to use a volumizing spray. At the moment, I'm using this one by Jewel Sensors. It's called the Ultra Volume and I literally just spray that onto my roots. So I spray it along my center part and just on the sides where it tends to go a little bit flatter. Every product I use always ends with whatever that move is. Then for a bit of extra thickness, yes love, you've been so good, yes. Then for a bit of extra thickness, I use the infamous BB. <laughs> yes, sweetie. I know. I use the infamous BB Bumble and Bumble Thickening Spray just to, I think it helps with the styling process. So I only use about three sprays of this because a little bit of it goes a long way and I find if you put too much, the hair goes a little bit too flat actually. But it does add a bit of thickness. This product here is a non-negotiable. This is the Moroccan Oil Volumizing Mousse. Now, the key to this one is don't put too much. So shake the can well and then use just the smallest poof. So I use about that much between the fingers. This is very satisfying actually. And then I just like to put it through 
oh. roughly ah. the top section ah. and mid sections of hair and I just comb it through with my fingers. And before I dry my hair, I just apply half of my skincare and at the moment I've got a lot of vitamin C and vitamin B serums and some lovely vitamin C facial oil just marinating on my skin as apparently anything that is fueled by vitamins they like to act alone so if you pop a moisturizer on directly it might counteract the benefits of those serums so I like to let this sit while I'm doing my hair drying a little beauty tip there as for the hair drying there is a technique for anyone out there that has this situation do let me know I have something called a cow lick. It's when a tuft of hair on your head just likes to just poof out at a certain angle and there's really not much you can do about it. So you kind of have to train it to sit flatter or more forward. I asked my hairdresser, is cow lick the technical term for what I have right now? And he said, yes. I just found that quite hilarious. You would have thought, you know, we might have moved on from a farmhouse in Oklahoma in 1950s is how I describe a cowlick. That aside, let me explain how I'm going to fix it. So for anyone out there who has a cowlick, what you need to do while your hair is still wet is you have to train the hair forward so it sits a bit more naturally. What you need to do first is you need to bunch your fringe section forward and you have to start blow drying that forward from the get-go just to begin the process of helping it to move forward across your face. Right, that seems to have <laughs> done the job. And then I'm just going to roughly blow dry my hair upside down just to give the extra volume to the rest of my hair. Okay, as you can see, the Moroccan oil has done its thing. There is a whole lot of volume in here. And what I also like about that Moroccan oil mousse is that it also nourishes the hair as well and acts as a heat protectant. I've switched hair tools. This is a very old hair tool by TNS. I'm not even sure about this brand. It was one of those stalls in the middle of the mall situation and I'm using this monkey claw attachment just to smooth out the hair a little and then we will get to the blow waving part. Okay now I'm going to switch out the attachment for this four bristle brush brush <laughs> excuse my lack of technical terminology. I'm going to divide my hair into two sections just so I can really focus on that top part in a different way to the bottom. I'm just going to run through segments of hair with a bristle brush with the heat turned on high just to give it a nice little curl uh, at the ends and straighten out the hair. Okay, I've established a bit of volume on my roots and now for the top section. So now what we're going to do is we're going to get this top bit or your fringe section and blow wave it forward. What you get is basically a mushroom effect, I'd call it, and it just keeps the fringe nice and close to your forehead. I didn't want a McDonald's arch situation, which is how I was blow weaving all wrong before. I actually think I might blow this entire top section forward just to give that extra volume. We're 95% of the way there. Fringe is looking good. I'm just going to make it a little bit more cohesive by just blowing to the side a little bit. And now you can see I've just separated the top layer from the bottom a little bit and created a bit more dimension to the hair, which is exactly what I wanted. And this is the Britney Spears, well, my version of a Britney Spears blowout. And just to settle everything down, because my hair is quite dry at the moment, I'm just going to pop in the smallest amount of hair oil just through the ends so we don't get any of those little stray hairs. And when I mean tiny, I mean a quarter of a caterpillar. And yes, that's my other new technical hair term of the day. Perfect. Now I'm going to set everything down and finish off my skincare in the bedroom. Okay. 
some more time has passed. It's the same day though, so I think that's an indication of having a good vlogging day. I have just done the finishing touches on my hair. I've had to settle the baby. So we have, what time is it? 20 minutes to take myself from looking like this to uh, something a bit more presentable. But we are 50% of the way there, so I'm going to rush through this. I apologize, but uh, that is the quintessential essence of my life, or in fact, my middle name, Opal Rush Bakes. It's kind of cool, actually. Maybe I should just rename this channel Opal Rush. Just quickly, finishing touches on the hair. Always the CUNY brush out like a hairspray. I use this because it's so easy to brush out and it doesn't stay in your hair and make it ugh, days after. So love this for me. And also I just went over my hair with a new purchase of mine. I finally have an appropriate hairbrush. This is a ball bristle brush. It basically makes your hair look more natural and cohesive. So it doesn't separate your hair. It kind of makes it one unit. So absolutely love this. Pick this up for about $5 at the chemist. I will link it down below. So the express tan actually worked out rather well. This is going to continue to develop over the next day or the remainder of this day. So it's really important to moisturize afterwards. And at the moment I'm using this sample that I received from Aspect. It's a hand and body cream, but I am so in love with this that I actually think I will go out and purchase this myself. It doesn't settle quite dry. It has a little bit of a tackiness to it, but it smells like Manuka honey and it's just so nourishing and keeps me hydrated for at least two days. So I can skip a day in between. Well, that's if I don't shower. Just a little bit too much insight into my personal hygiene there. Let's talk base because this is the founding father of your face. If you don't have a good base, you cannot do good makeup. And I always begin with the Bare Minerals Complexion Rescue. It has a gel-like consistency and it has a little bit of SPF in there. So it's super hydrating and also protects you. Now, this is not my perfect shade. I would probably call this more my winter shade. So not quite appropriate for somebody who's just tanned but I'm going to pop on a foundation that'll match my current glow a lot better. And because I tend to slightly panic under pressure, I realize that I haven't put any moisturizer on. This never changes either. Under makeup, I exclusively use Tatcha. Why is this box so small, you ask? This is a sample. I usually use Tatcha's Dewy Skin Cream, which is a purple container. This is a lovely aqua green, and it's a sample that I got in my recent Beauty Loop box. This was meant to go on before the Complexion Rescue, which has a tint to it. The consistency is very much water-like because this is entitled the water cream, ironically. So I'm just going to grab a portion of this and put this over the top. Probably the complete wrong thing to do, but like I said, Hydration is the key to any makeup base. If you don't have hydration, your makeup will crease throughout the day and nobody wants a creasy face. Hopefully this works out just as well as my dewy skin cream. Now for the foundation. I'm not going to put too much on because I have tanned today and I'm using another little sample pot until I can get a new one. But I've absolutely fallen in love with the NARS Sheer Glow Foundation in the shade Barcelona, which I believe is the proper way to say it. I like to apply my foundation when my moisturizer is really fresh because it blends a lot better and you'll avoid later in the day all that creasing that would come from applying your foundation to a dry face. And I pick out the sections that I want to apply foundation to, just to part the curtains there. I do realize my fringe is a little bit curtain-like, but I love the shape that it gives my face. It sort of just narrows things down a little bit. And why I love this foundation, it doesn't crease. It's a very medium to low coverage and just gives the complexion a really smooth appearance without mattifying or drying it out and also not being overly shiny either. It's just the perfect balance is how I would describe it. Giorgio Armani Concealer in shade three. This is the Luminous Silk. 
and I only apply a minimal amount of this across the tip of the nose and up here on the bridge of the nose just to conceal all those lovely characterizing bumps and I take it down the crown lines a little bit as well to conceal those and I shape the nose with my concealer as well so I kind of do a reverse with my nose contour I don't use bronzer I actually use concealer and blending that all in with a very very mini blender brush which I need to replace because it is disgusting TMI but I think I've literally had this for three or four years and I've never washed it. I set everything down directly with this powder that I've mentioned many times in my video the By Terry Hyaluronic Hydro Powder and I double up my eyeshadow brush to apply my powder. Now you don't need much of this just on the areas that I want to stick just that little bit more. So under the eyes, the nose, forehead and the chinny chin chin. Using a lot of samples today, this is the NARS Laguna bronzer. It's a lovely cool toned bronzer. Just using that to carve out a bit of definition in the cheekbones. I apply it under the cheekbones on the temples. And then just across the forehead here, just anywhere where the sun might naturally hit. And then I'm just carving out the jawline a little bit here, just to make it appear less square. And I just run it down the edges of the jawline as well and take it down the neck slightly. And I just put a dab in the middle of my nose just to shorten it up a little bit. If I want to snatch my cheekbones even more, I'll just take a bit of extra concealer and just put a little line where I want my cheek bones to be highlighted and I will just carve out a little line towards my ear just to add a little bit more definition. Super subtle makeup today, so you may not even see this. I always say there's nothing like a bit of colour to make you look awake. I've put on far too much blush and on the wrong brush as well. Never get me rushed for time. I will make a billion mistakes. And I take my blush right underneath my eye and up to the temples. And I don't extend it down to this section. I want to leave this section rather highlighted with concealer as I have a rather square face and you just want to keep the lightness in the center because the more that you get rid of that or bring it too far in you lose that nice oval shape and a little bit of a pump of pink on my nose using some gold glow drops by Mecca Cosmetica a beauty store here in Australia and they do their own brand as well a bit like a Sephora it's basically the Australia's version of Sephora and I've got way too much highlight but it's okay we live a bit of Tarte highlight this is the first highlight I ever bought and it is still my favorite it just gives the most wonderful glow look at that and I add it just to the tip of my nose and on the bridge and a little bit goes an extremely, extremely long way. It is so powerful, but the finish is so sheer. You don't see any glitter particles, which I sifted through so many that you could see blobs of glitter in there. This is just seamless. I'm using Hourglass for my brows at the minute. And I really like an eyebrow tool that has a brush at one end and the chalk at the other or crayon if you will. This really shows my depth of knowledge for beauty with all the terminology I've been spitting out at you guys today. Another powder, this is the Hourglass Ambient Glow and it basically makes you look like you've been sat in candlelight. It just adds a bit of a darkness to the face which sounds a bit strange to some but who doesn't love a candlelit glow that hides the imperfections and once I have set my face down I use the all nighter spray by Urban Decay give that a shake and I just do two pumps of this fan myself out 
I love how this opens the curtains. <laughs> Just going to do a super quick neutral eye with this very old Coco Contour Palette by Too Faced. And I'm not a huge fan of Too Faced actually, to be quite fair. Apart from this one, of course, they don't make this anymore, but this was the very first contour palette that I ever bought when contouring was a thing, when Kim K brought it in. I believe that when she introduced the world to this, it never went back. Home stretch, eyelashes. I always have to curl mine, otherwise they just keep hitting my face. Apologize, my phone has been going off like crazy and usually nobody ever contacts me. Great. And I always use two mascaras. The mascara that I really want to use, which at the moment is this Clinique Lash Power. Again, another little sample, which I am loving right now. Just gives you a really bold lash look. And I've spoken about this amazing mascara before. It's not going to focus. It's the Kevin O'Coin Volume Mascara. It's a tubing mascara, so it's not ink based. And I have to apply this as my second coat. So the ink from the previous mascara doesn't run onto my eyelids because I have very oily eyelids. My lip liner is always a MAC one, but I need the right sharpener to get it to a good place again. Gosh, it's not easy to talk when you're doing lip liner. It's like a ventriloquist act. And by Terry's Hyaluronic Hydro Balm in Tea Time. Balmy. Situation, but the color is just a beautiful peachy fresh spring nude. So today's look we are going for hydration. And no look is complete without some accessories. I've just popped on my half pearl half chain necklace, some very old loop de loop earrings, and just some simple bangles and the obligatory silk scrunchie for whenever I have to tie my hair up. And this is me now ready for a half day, if not one tenth of a day of filming because often my day just leads me here because I have lots of responsibilities other than this. So one thing I also like to do is make the bed before filming just in case you get a glimpse of it. This is a habit I've only brought into my life recently as a beyond 30 year old woman. No judgment here guys. I feel quite like the successful woman boss which I'm kind of going for with this outfit today. A little one has come to join me, so once again, I will, uh, I'll be a minute. This, I think, is my ideal working from home attire. Just a lovely, comfortable, short knit, because nobody likes to be swamped in too much clothing when you're at home. And these very comfortable and lavish black silk trousers that I picked up for a date night, actually. And I've worn once before, but Wow, if I could wear these around the house every day, not realistic, but I definitely would. And I have flaunted this belt as many times as I can because it is an absolute wardrobe must have an equestrian or horse bit belt. And if I was going to go for some footwear, I think I might pop on these pointed mules. These are the Carissa Leather Mule by a brand called Atmos and Here. They are a brand I think owned by the Iconic, the online fashion brand, which I am a VIP of because I pretty much exclusively order all my clothes off there. They just have the best discounts and the best returns policy and delivery. They're so fast. Anyway, if I was to finish off this outfit to wear from home office to the outside world, I'd probably just pop these on for comfort. Now, these trousers are a little long, so they are more suited to heels, but for working at home, I think this is the perfect way to look chic yet comfortable. Now, Mama is hungry, as I always am, so I'm going to leave you in this video of me enjoying some lunch. I think I might go Italian today. We have a few bits and pieces in the fridge and some leftover ciabatta, so I'm feeling very Italian summer today, so that's what I will do next. I just find I'm snacking so, so much lately. Just, I think the change in seasons, the change in weather, 
I basically just want to eat and sleep. I just want to revert back to my baby-like self where that was all I did for my life, which honestly I'm kind of craving right now. <laughs> Having at least one snack a day, sometimes up to three snacks a day. I know, wild. But I know me and I know that keeping well fed and well hydrated makes for a very happy opal. So I'm going to have some lunch. Please enjoy it with me and I will see you in my next vlog. Hope you enjoyed and picked up some tips and anything that I featured makeup wise or hair wise in the links down below. My hair has been so cooperative and I just really foresee me going with this style of hair moving forward. I think it's just a lot more fresh and modern compared to the curls and I'm sure the curls will creep its way back in at some point but for now I think Opal has found her new style. Let me know if you give it a try. Also on a more candid note thank you so much for uh, putting up with all the jumping around in my video sometimes because we are on a very tight tight schedule every minute of the day. I try to use up every minute for everything that I need to take care of in my personal life and in my family life and in my work life. So I appreciate your tolerance and I hope you don't mind the switching around in this one, but hopefully we get more cohesive as we move forward. Thank you to all my current subscribers. I really appreciate you. Uh, you can check me out on Instagram. I sometimes do some stuff for there. I'm mainly a YouTube girl, I have to be honest, but we're open to all the profiles and what's happening. All right. I'm going to have some lunch. And all of that has made me very hungry. And yes, this is quite, <laughs> quite the feast and a homegrown feast at that. Uh, we had a donation of some homegrown tomatoes where there is nothing better than a homegrown tomato. Homegrown basil. And that's why you know it's organic because it's got the lovely little caterpillar bites through there. So I've ripped that up and also be aware when you uh, serving basil always rip it don't use a knife because the knife uh, creates like a blackened edge to it it has like a chemical reaction with the basil apparently and a fresh ciabatta loaf so my next move is to drizzle this with only the best olive oil which is cola vita extra virgin and well you know what a glass of wine would pair perfectly but the afternoon perhaps better to hold off till the evening <laughs> and so I've got some lovely concini hiding underneath here as well for my little caprese salad I'm very excited <gasps> this has to be my favorite all-time lunch simple cheap and this will last me for quite a few days What the wine is it is a templanillo which i've never ever tried before in the category of wines that i'm familiar with but may i just say it's dry but very juicy a spanish wine actually definitely repurchasing and no this is not the afternoon it is now the evening and we are having italian night so i thought this was rather appropriate and i thought i would just share with you my wine discovery